Hi, this is Steve, sometimes known as your friendly neighborhood man in magenta wig. And recently I've been working on a little project. And I'd like to show you what I have so far. I think you'll I think you'll find it pretty cool. Now this project's really in its infancy. I'm hoping it just grows and grows over the years. But I want to show you what I have so far. So I think um, of all the things from my childhood that are pretty much gone now, uh, what I miss most is the 1990s music store. You know, the area where I lived in, our main road had so many of them. You know, we had three malls, each of which had an NRM. We had uh, Camelot Music, we had Wave Music, uh, we had we had a couple music oasises that popped up here and there. Uh, we, you know, other stores that sold music, Borders, Circuit City and stuff, Best Buy. But I really miss the feeling of like going into a Waves music and just checking out like all the cassettes and stuff. So I thought, okay, if I can't go to a 90s music store, I need to bring a 90s music store to me. I need to live in a 90s music store. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm slowly trying to turn my apartment into a 1990s music store. So let me show you what I have so far. All right, so at the moment, it's not a whole lot. Um, I, I had it on a bookshelf, and it, it outgrew that, so I have it on table at the moment, uh, just kind of flea market style, but this is, uh, this is just everything I have so far. Uh, so I've been scouring the stores recently, you know, exchanges, half-price books, you know, things like that, uh, because 90 CDs tend to run really cheap. You know, they're, they're usually in the dollar bin, so I've been buying tons and tons of CDs, you know, tons of CDs I remember looking at as a kid, and, you know, tons of CDs that had hits in the 90s, you know, R.E.M.'s Monster I have, and uh, so a ton of Nine Inch Nails, and uh, Madonna, Ray of Light, Bedtime Stories. Oh god, they might be giants, of course. I gotta have TMBG, Beatles anthologies, obviously. Um, back here, uh, I even have a section for singles. I had some of these laying around for when I was a kid, but I've been uh, I've been hunting some down too. Obviously, you know, spice up your life. I have to have have to have Spice Girls in there somewhere. The Macarena, and uh, over here now. The big chain stores didn't generally do this, uh, usually like the little indie stores, but you would see this section called imports. Now what the import section was in a 90s music store, um, it, it, it was generally bootlegs. They weren't allowed to call them bootlegs, but you looked at them and you knew that's what they were. So these are, uh, these are actual <laughs> bootleg CDs that came out in the 90s. Uh, what I definitely had to include was the, um, the Pink Floyd trance remixes because Excuse me, I saw one of these, actually I saw the animals one, uh, as a kid in one of those so-called import sections in a little music store, and I had no idea what this was, what a trance remix was, and the, I mean, these, if you've heard these, these CDs are so friggin' bizarre, but yeah, this, this was the first one I saw, and this is a, uh, this is a Pink Floyd box set, too, it's a two-disc box set, comes in a fuzzy triangle from the, uh, from the 90s. Now, you know the the music stores generally had like a little book section too, and these are some uh, these are some books from the the late eighties, uh, mid nineties, mostly about the Beatles because I bought so many Beatles books back then. You know, I th this is definitely what I remembered looking at. Um, now you're probably thinking, you know, what what is the time span of my uh, you know what am I covering in my little music store? I'm saying nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety nine. You know, I, there are so many. Uh, albums like um, like George Michael's Faith uh, that I remember looking at, and uh, you know, people in my family owning when I was when I was a kid that were from the late '80s. So I want to include those as well. Um, now over here, over here we have the cassette singles because my favorite thing to do in the music stores was look at the big wall of cassette singles, and hopefully I'll have a big wall of cassette singles someday. Unfortunately, I got rid of a lot of the ones I had as a kid, but I'm, you know, I, I had a few of them laying around. Um, I've been looking at the thrift stores and stuff to see what I could find. The problem I'm finding the most, because I had a bunch of these that I don't have anymore, is maxi singles. Now, maxi singles, if you don't remember, like, uh, here, here's a couple of them I had as a kid, like Snow Informer. Uh, it was like the main version of the song, and then there was like five or six uh, remixes of the song. I can't find maxi singles anywhere. I mean, th they're ones I owned as a kid that I can't even find on Discogs or anything. So, don't think I'm going to be able to replace those, but, you know, I'll, I'll keep looking at the flea markets and stuff. 
Now, since we are covering the late 80s, mid 90s, you know, 45s were still kind of around. You know, I, I even remember owning Snow's Informer as a 45. But yeah, we got, uh, obviously, they'd be pushing the Beatles anthology, so we got Free as a Bird. Uh, this was from Live at the BBC. Uh, gotta have Millie Vanilli, it's the 90s. Millie Vanilli, Millie Vanilli, Kylie Minogue, Kylie Minogue, obviously. Uh, some Jane Weed went under there. Now, um... I, I put this out here. This is the the uh, picture disc 45 of Paul's Young Boy. Um, now, I, I remember when the anthologies came out that uh, Borders had a table with all this Beatles stuff laid out. And this is, I actually saw this laid out on a table and I bought it. So I decided to do the same thing here. Now, uh, under here, uh, I don't know how well lit this is. Let me, let me pull the light over so we can get a, a better view here. I have too many box sets. I just have a couple uh, late 80s, early 90s box sets. I have uh, the, the tour edition of Paul McCartney's Flowers in the Dirt. It has a CD in it and posters and bookmarks and stuff. Uh, and, of course, the Rocky 15th anniversary box set from 1990. Uh, over here, um, we have some vinyl. This is mostly like 12-inch singles and stuff. Some albums, like this is an album uh, from the late 80s to mid 90s. Got Herb Alpert. Herb Alpert, when he tried to go hip-hop and stuff, I don't know how well that worked out, but yeah, Herb Alpert. I found, found a Chumbawamba one. It's 90s, you gotta have Chumbawamba. Uh, I think that's Depeche Mode. One called Run Forest Run, I found that in a, um, I found that in a thrift store. Oh, what else we got? Millie Vanilli, Mill yep, yep, um, yep, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yep. The real faces of Millie Vanilli. Then there's this guy. What what happened to Jimmy Ray? He had that like one song. Yeah, he had like one song, and then he disappeared. It's right. an odd one I found. I think this is from the yeah, because it's it's a parody of CNC Music Factory, Sissy Penis Factory. <laughs> yeah, I I found this in a half price books once. Uh, Snow's Informer as a twelve inch, which is nice because it's identical to the maxi single I have on tape, which is like mangled to the point of unplayable. I. Didn't take care of, didn't take care of stuff that well as a kid. Uh, spinal taps break like the wind. This is the picture disc. Donna's 80s Donna Summer. Yeah. I like the back cover better. <laughs> the front cover's kind of freaky. Uh, James Taylor. They might be giants, couple 12-inch singles. Doctor in the TARDIS, Jane Weedlin. Alright. So, but the 90s don't stop here. I'm not quite limited to this table though. Here, let me uh, take you over here. Now, of course, uh, 90s music stores always had some kind of, like, book and uh, video sections. So this is, this is you know, the little bit that I have. Um, just the uh, two top shelves here. I got the uh, the Saturday Night Live first 20 years CD-ROM set. Uh, this is the, uh, the laser disc of Spinal Tap. This is the CD-ROM of Spinal Tap. Um, it, it, you can watch the movie very grainy and low quality in like a little pop-up quick time window. Now, of course, you know, episode one, they'd start pushing this, uh, around 98, 99. Um, so, got Jar Jar here, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I loved going to, I loved going to Borders and looking at the, uh, Saturday Night Live VHS. I mean, there were hundreds of these things. I only have a few left, but yeah. Most of these have, most of them have these same like matching, matching spines on them. It's the uh, the twentieth anniversary of Greece. I think this book's around that same time too. Of course, gotta gotta represent Kevin Smith somehow. Uh, I know, I know. I I should have like the the Book of Golden Eye or something, but this is this is all I got. But that's the novelization book about Spinal Tap that came out to push uh, Break Like the Wind and. Uh, oh, I loved this book as a kid. I, you know, I, I just loved, I just loved looking at these books that show all the album covers and stuff. And got a couple more here. Uh, you know, the famous Pink Floyd book, Saucer Full of Secrets. Got Frank Zappa's book. So yes, that is that is the start of my '90s music store. Um, now. I still haven't been to our big flea market here in Pittsburgh. Um, I really want to get out there as soon as it gets warm. Definitely to scour for cassette singles. Because um, I've, I've been having trouble finding those the most. You know, even thrift stores and stuff, I'm not having a lot of luck with those. But, yeah, definitely think the flea market is going to be the uh, the solution for those. But, 
you know, CD wise, half price books exchange, you know, any place that has a dollar bin, you can find 90s albums and always the more common ones like Alanis Morissette, Chumbawamba, stuff like that. So, so yeah, I want to live in a 90s music store and this is just the start. Hopefully you will join me on my journey. But for now, this has been Steve, a.k.a. your friendly neighborhood man in Magenta Wig, and I will see you again soon.